Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I want to talk about a rules issue that has come up recently um, that affects both the Feculent Gnarl Maw and the Sylvaneth Wildwoods. I'm going to be looking at it from the perspective of the Feculent Gnarl Maw, but just keep in mind that all of this really applies to Sylvaneth Wildwoods as well. So, um, we got new War Scrolls with the FAQ for all of our faction terrain that told us for the Feculent Gnarl Maw as well as the Sylvaneth Wildwoods that they had to be set up wholly within your own territory. With the current battle plans in the new GHB, that leaves you basically with just your deployment zone most of the time where you can set up your uh, faction terrain, which is definitely a problem because both Feculent Gnarl Maws and Sylvaneth Wildwoods are things that you kind of want out in the middle of the battlefield to gain their full utility. Um, we've gotten several rounds of FAQs, which have definitely caused confusion, and the ruling sort of changed and changed back again, and that just sort of added to the confusion. I'm just going to give a quick shout out to Marcus Papa on Facebook who um, like pulled out all of these details. This is me just sort of making a video and retelling the story of uh, what he had put together. Um, but um, just definitely still note this is the same for Sylvaneth Wildwoods, but from here on out, I'm basically going to be just talking about Gnarl Maws. So, here is the new War Scroll for the Feculent Gnarl Maw. Our setup tells us that after territories are determined, you can set up this faction terrain feature wholly within your territory and more than three inches from all other objectives and terrain features. Both players can set up faction terrain features at the same time, but must roll off that the winner decides who sets up the faction terrain feature first. Okay, so this is talking about where you set it up at the beginning of the game. However, you can summon additional Feculent Gnarl Maws later in the game, and the War Scroll doesn't directly address that issue. We can see here, the this is from the Nurgle Battle Tome on summoning uh, models. We can see on the chart is the Feculent Gnarl Maw, and the key wording here is summoned units must be set up wholly within 12 inches of a Feculent Gnarl Maw or a friendly Nurgle hero, and more than 9 inches from any enemy models. So, that is much more open than what we have with the setup rules on the War Scroll. This doesn't have any restrictions as to where can it be in relation to objectives or uh, other pieces of terrain. Uh, there is additional language on Horticulus Slimux on uh, how he gets his uh, Feculent Normal Maw set up. I didn't include that in here because that's not the most common way to set it up, but it is uh, fairly similar in its restrictions. So here is the first answer that caused all of the problems. Some faction terrain, or some factions can add terrain features to their army after the battle begins. Do the game terms faction terrain and terrain feature refer to all terrain features with the faction terrain war scrolls, even those added to your army? Yes. If the answer to uh, the above is yes. Do the placement restrictions apply to your faction terrain features that are set up after the battle begins? Yes. Okay. So this FAQ, this was in either this first or second FAQ out of um, third edition. We're now on our third round of FAQs that just came out last week. Um, so this is telling us for a Feculent Gnarl Maw or Sylvaneth Wildwoods that it would have to be uh, deployed in your territory when you summon an additional one, because that is a, you're placing it, the, you're following the placement restrictions on the War Scroll um, when you're setting up after the battle begins. Now, here's the thing, is that this kind of got superseded in a later FAQ. And the issue is that 
the future FAQs that we have don't actually pick this out in magenta. They simply leave it, this ruling off. So let's take a look at that. So we have the same question that we previously had. We just don't have that follow-up question anymore about the terrain placement after the battle begins. So to me, this is a retraction of that previous ruling as it's not included in the current FAQ. So the conclusion that I come to is that you use your summoning restrictions from wherever the source is of summoning for your Feculent Gnarl Maw or your Sylvaneth Wildwoods and not the War Scroll setup restrictions. Those restrictions are for initial setup at the beginning of the game, not setup of ones that are summoned later. Whew, okay. Just to cover all of our bases, here are all of the other applicable sections and uh, other questions and answers out of the FAQ and out of the rules. Um, I'll just let you pause here and read all of this, but there's basically nothing in here that tells us specifically about setting up uh, faction terrain features after the uh, battle has already begun. So, in conclusion, the summon terrain features are, in my opinion, they are not going to be restricted to the placement rules on their war scrolls if they're summoned later in the game. The placement rules on the war scroll are for their initial setup at the beginning of the match, not for summoning. Your summoning rules will tell you where and when you can place those additional feculent gnarl maws or sylvaneth wildwoods. Who, if we look at this from the perspective as rules as intended, it doesn't make any sense to be putting these only in your deployment zone. One of the main functions of the Sylvaneth Wildwoods is teleporting from one forest to another, and then additional benefits you get for having guys in or near, and um, effects that you get that damage your opponent when they're nearby. Feculent Gnarl Maws, the big thing there is that you have that seven inch radius of run and charge around them. So it's definitely a big deal that if you read into this from the perspective of does this make sense given the rest of the rules surrounding these terrain features, it doesn't make any sense that ones that you summon later in the game would be placed in your deployment zone or in your territory. It barely makes sense that these are being set up in your territory at the beginning of the game. Um, it kind of does, you know, like it, you know, your faction terrain would only be near where you're beginning and you would have to set it up deeper into the battlefield later on. That kind of makes sense. But um, in terms of actually like using this usefulness for gameplay, um, it just doesn't make sense if it's only going to be in your territory. There's no purpose, really, to summoning more of them later on in the game. So I don't think that they would be creating that sort of situation where they're just it, like boxing themselves out of using rules that are on these War Scrolls and in your Allegiance abilities. So that is what I've come up to here. It appears that what happened was is that there was a bad ruling and then later a retraction of that ruling and because when games workshop pulls stuff out of the faq and reverses a ruling they don't put it in magenta or strike through it or anything like that they simply leave it out and that is kind of a problem for rules interpretation later on um, because you can't find where that change happened. You have to have all of the different versions of the FAQs in PDF or printed out to see the changes over time and see, aha, this thing is no longer there. And that means they changed their mind. Anyway... That's it for now, guys. Hopefully that cleared up some things for people. I'm pretty confident in this ruling and how that would be played. 
Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as always. Turn on your notifications to get alerts when our new videos are posted. You can support us over on Patreon if you'd like to contribute to the channel and help us grow. And of course, you can join us on Facebook and Twitter to continue the conversation there. And don't forget uh, the comments section down below. If you think I'm wrong and you would like to prove me wrong, feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, Anytime I get anything wrong, it is wonderful for the Facebook algorithms for you to go down there in the description or in the comments section and tell me just how wrong and stupid I am. That is wonderful for the channel and actually uh, helps boost us up. So please do that. All right, guys, I'll talk to you all later.